Welcome back to another Score Builders question and answer video session. This video provides members of the Score Builders team with the opportunity to explore challenging multiple choice examination questions with students actively preparing for the licensing examination. My name is Scott Giles and I will be your host for today's journey. I will read the question and provide you with an additional 60 seconds to answer the question. Ready? Let's go. A patient reports to physical therapy for evaluation with a referral that states they had platelet-rich plasma PRP injections three days ago. The patient received the injections after several months of failed treatment for Achilles tendinopathy. Which of the following interventions would be the most likely for the initial session? 1. Instruction in crutch training and or use of a walking boot. 2. Achilles tendon static stretching and resistance band ankle strengthening. 3 calf raises, bridges, and straight leg raises, four, single leg balance on even and uneven surfaces. Your first thought upon reading this question might be, are you kidding me? Questions about platelet-rich plasma injections on the physical therapy licensing examination? Yes, indeed. In fact, this should not be a surprise to diligent physical therapy students familiar with the current examination blueprint published by the Federation of State Boards of Physical Therapy. Remember, the examination blueprint changes significantly every five years, and with this change, new topics such as regenerative medicine are added, while other topics previously on the examination are removed. Let me be more specific. The largest content outline category on the current licensing examination is called Foundations for Evaluation, Differential Diagnosis, and Prognosis. This category refers to the interpretation of knowledge about diseases and conditions of the musculoskeletal, neuromuscular, and nervous systems according to current best evidence in order to support appropriate and effective patient-client management for rehabilitation, health promotion, and performance across the lifespan. One of the subcategories in this broad area is as follows. The impact of regenerative medicine. For example, platelet-rich plasma, stem cells, on physical therapy prognosis and interventions related to musculoskeletal, neuromuscular, and nervous systems diseases conditions. Becoming familiar with the current examination blueprint can go a long way toward avoiding unpleasant surprises on test day. Let's take a deeper dive into platelet-rich plasma injections. Platelet-rich plasma, PRP injections, have been used predominantly for musculoskeletal sport injuries. For example, hamstring strain, patella tendinopathy, Achilles tendinopathy. Since PRP-based therapies are still in their infancy, there is not a consensus rehabilitation protocol that has been established and widely agreed upon. Existing protocols often include a period of rest, immobilization, and or limited weight bearing in the period that immediately follows the procedure that is to say, the first few days or week. This is then followed by a gradual progression of weight-bearing, exercise, and activity to progressively load the affected structure. Let's explore each of the options. Option one, instruction in crutch training and or use of a walking boot. Since the patient is less than one week post-injection, physical therapy intervention would likely be limited at this point. The initial recovery period after the procedure is often characterized by rest and mobilization, and in some cases, weight-bearing restrictions. It would be important to ensure the patient is knowledgeable on how to use crutches and or a walking boot to help limit stress to the tendon during the stage. Option two, 
Achilles tendon static stretching, and resistance band ankle strengthening. Range of motion exercise and static stretching may be used early in the rehabilitation process. However, resistance band strengthening would be too aggressive at this stage. Typically, strengthening will not begin for at least two weeks after the procedure. Option three, calf raises, bridges, and straight leg raises. It may be important for the therapist to include strengthening, for example, bridges, straight leg raises, of other muscles and joints in the initial recovery period to prevent deconditioning. However, performing calf raises would be too aggressive at this stage given the Achilles tendinopathy. Option four, single leg balance on even and uneven surfaces. Having the patient perform different balance exercises in single leg stance would likely be too aggressive at this stage given the Achilles tendinopathy, especially given that the patient would be balancing on uneven surfaces. The correct answer is option one. Let's explore the all student data. 62% of students selected option one, instruction in crutch training and or use of a walking boot, the correct response. 18% of students selected option two, Achilles tendon static stretching and resistance band ankle strengthening. 11% of students selected option three, calf raises, bridges, and straight leg raises. 9% of students selected option four, single leg balance on even and uneven surfaces. System classification. This question is a musculoskeletal system question which represents approximately 27% of all exam items. Content outline classification. This question is an interventions question which represents approximately 29% of all exam items. Level classification. This question is a level three question since the question requires candidates to systematically analyze and often interpret information to determine an appropriate course of action. Level three questions tend to have some degree of subjectivity and candidates are required to assign varying degrees of importance to different variables. Thanks for joining us on the Scorpola's question and answer video session. See you next week.